We good? All right. All right, so today I want to share with you some thoughts I have about Joomla's future. More specifically, I want to share uh, some thoughts about my vision for Joomla's future. Um, my vision doesn't necessarily require that we refactor all the code or make major changes to our code structure, even though we're at a point where we need to be considering making some changes to our code structure. My vision doesn't require complex diagrams drawn within the heart of Joomla to explain it. I can actually explain my vision in two slides and have measurable goals with measurable results. I have a vision that one day Joomla is an active player in the PHP community and we can contribute our code and our knowledge from 10 years of development to this community and that Joomla becomes a consumer of the code and knowledge written by the PHP community. We're actually already on our way to realizing this vision thanks to abandoned misfits and their unique interpretations of Joomla's mission statement and the efforts that created what we know today as the Joomla platform or framework. <laughs> yeah. All right, so a little bit of background getting to where we are now. Uh, Joomla 1.5 was released in January 2008. As you know, it was a major restructure of our code base, and it brought about quite a few things that we've built our legacy on. Uh, our application was designed around the model view controller design pattern, and you had hints towards an object-oriented API in our top-level framework. Uh, I'm good. Uh, like I said, that architecture still defines our application stack today, seven years later. So it can't have been that bad of a change. A hidden gem within this application structure was the possibility of building bespoke, bespoke applications built on that framework code. Uh, with a little bit of effort, you could bootstrap an application to run in parallel to the CMS, or you could even replace some objects in the application stack with your own custom versions. Anyone remember this bit of code from the Kuwa system plugin? Back in, back in February of 2009, to bootstrap Nuku, they were using a system plugin to replace the uh, singleton objects in our JFactory with their own versions. Luckily, Nuku's changed quite a bit since then. JFactory, though, largely exists untouched to this day. The vision of a standalone application framework uh, started to take shape in 2010 and 2011 um, by way of what we know now as the Joomla platform. It wasn't really very modular, though. It was very monolithic, and our code structure was still heavily tied to uh, different, different parts of our API. Um, but it was the first actual representation on thinking about building more applications than our CMS using our framework code base. Um, while working on the platform, it actually inspired many of the APIs that we now build the CMS upon today, such as our refactored application classes, which, in, which brought about better support for command line and web applications, our HTTP client, which is heavily integrated into our update system, and even our GitHub API wrapper, which we use throughout the project in our patch tester or our issue tracking application. The platform team was a bit ahead of its time, too. Um, some of the stuff that went on behind the scenes with the platform included this tester application, which you can still find on GitHub. Uh, and, it, and its purpose was to serve uh, was to do some back-end management stuff, run some tests on pull requests, publish, some, uh, publish our test data, things like that. These are actually services we take for granted today by way of Scrutinizer and Travis CI. Incidentally, the platform also has several Hello World type applications floating around, or many examples on how to pull your Twitter stream, because what else did anti-social developers do in 2012? Early in 2013, um, a community member began discussions on what would be considered the next logical refactoring of the platform code base. Support for native PHP namespaces and, distrib and distributing our code by way of Composer. It was an idea that the platform team itself supported, but in order to make this change, it basically required us to break uh, compatibility with the CMS. Um, it wasn't a decision that was made lightly, but it was a decision that we wanted to explore. So we basically broke compatibility and we moved forward with what we know now as the Joomla framework. Some interesting ideas came out of uh, being able to break compatibility with the CMS. Uh, we were able to drop out some of the code structures from the monolithic platform that we considered to be very CMS-specific logic. And we were able to refactor some packages to have a more modular approach and better represented based on what you would find with actual framework stacks. Um, our event package and our uh, application profile are examples of this. 
We were also able to kill off JFactory in the framework stack and replace it with our own dependency injection container. The framework code actually started resembling something decently modern for its time. At the same time, in the PHP community, there was a major shift happening also. Uh, Composer and Packagist were becoming the mainstream uh, platforms for distributing code to the PHP community. The PHP fig became a big thing, and you had developers from dozens of projects in the PHP community collaborating on common standards based on existing patterns in their own projects. We know these today as, we know these today as PSRs. We were being enabled to more easily share our code with a larger code base through collaborating with one another. A common theme that you hear from Drupal since they've been working on Drupal 8 is how they've proudly shifted from a not invented here mentality to proudly invented elsewhere. In many ways, you can see the same shift happening in the PHP community as a whole. At a period just before SDKs and collaborated community packages became a mainstream thing, Joomla took a chance at addressing its own perceived issues with the lack of a common uh, platform for connecting to external API services. So as early as 2011, we had our own GitHub API wrapper, which was actually the first representation of GitHub's V3 API in PHP with full support. Uh, in Google Summer of Code in 2012, we expanded on this and implemented uh, API wrappers for Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, a little bit of the Google API. And we also had our OAuth client packages written. Um, unfortunately for us, these packages were all still very tightly coupled into the monolithic platform structure. So at best bet, they were only consumable to the Joomla community, if they even made it that far. Anyone remember the cloud storage packages that were written as part of Summer of Code 2013? Though we tried a couple of times to find a way to release them, the fact is that code never made it into production. In fact, it, this is representative of much of our social API code, too. A lot of those wrappers are seldom used, not very well maintained, and they're not very, very friendly options when compared to other PHP packages. So here we are near the middle of 2015, and we're running with a code base that's starting to run stagnant. Sure, there's been a lot of innovation in the 3.x series, a lot of fairly new and fairly cleaned up APIs, but structurally, there's still a lot of API that is similar to when it was released in uh, January 2011 with the 1.6 release, or even conceptually, there's still some APIs that look like they did in 1.5, seven years ago. I mentioned before my vision doesn't call for code change, but let's face it, we're at a point where we need some change. As far as the CMS goes, many of us sitting in this room have an idea on some sort of technical limitation of Joomla. Every application has its limits. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. We also might have some libraries or workarounds to deal with some of those unique quirks in running Joomla, such as this controller method, which is sending the application response and exiting long before plugins have a chance of screwing up a non-HTML request. On the framework side of things, though there's been a fair bit of effort into decoupling our packages and improving uh, the dependency management, the fact is that there's still a lot of room that our code base can grow to better serve our own community and to potentially bring in new users. I bet some of you in this room can already hear your clients groaning about the potential of change. We do need it, but it doesn't need to be so drastic that we chase away our users again. At its heart, our CMS should always enable users to very easily publish content. But we shouldn't limit what our code can do to a small set of use cases based on what we consider the CMS to be. Joomla itself has a 15-year history of producing code and software, and that includes the time we were developed under Mambo. It's a lot of experience that we can potentially share with the PHP community. Likewise, just because we could be seen as the crusty old veterans in an ecosystem that's been evolving very rapidly over the last few years, that doesn't mean we can't learn a thing or two from our community members also. In fact, Jab and some of the other events in Joomla over the last couple of years have taken an opportunity to welcome outside advice. Many of these faces are sitting in this room today, and you'll have a chance to hear from them throughout the weekend. Although we've been welcoming outsiders and welcoming their knowledge, we aren't necessarily listening to it very well. And it's actually something that we can improve on as a whole. We have a knack for wanting full control over our application stack. 
to the point that we'll write code solutions ourselves to avoid a vendor lock to a third-party dependency, or we'll even accept hacks to third-party code. I know this patch isn't readable, but I wanted to demonstrate it anyway, because it highlights my point. This is the password hashing API library that we brought in uh, with uh, 3.2 to help support bcrypt hashing. And we hacked it up to support older PHP versions because we were very reluctant to accept change. Long and short is our discussions often turn to rolling our own solutions instead of accepting external, pro ex accepting external code. Since adopting Bootstrap in 2012, how many times has it been suggested that we just roll our own CSS framework instead of continue to use a third-party solution? We've taken some steps forward in sharing our code with the PHP community. In fact, all of our code has been available on packages since we started separating things into the framework in 2013. And even without mainstream, uh, pu mainstream publishing, um, some of that code's gathered some decent attention. Our string package, which has our UTF-8 compatibility code, has over 12,000 downloads over the last two years. And our database code has 10,000 downloads over that same period. These are both packages that have lived through the CMS for quite some time. Even some of our newer code, like our refactored event package, or our dependency injection code, have seen some moderate success with over 5,000 downloads of each. Having our decoupled modular packages also helps developers in building their own libraries and applications. Our own issue tracker highlights some of the possibilities of using Joomla's code in a context beyond the CMS, while continuing to integrate external services to fill some of the voids in Joomla's API. We don't need to write everything ourselves. Some of the other things that you can find on packages Using some of Joomla's tools include a TransFX API wrapper, which is built around our HTTP client, and a console package, which extends our application, uh, our command line application class, and has some inspiration from Symfony's console component. They may not seem like major steps forward, but they do demonstrate progress towards sharing our code and enabling developers to build tools using that code. A side effect of this is we've gotten past not invented here syndrome in some ways. Um, for a long time, we would write our own code solutions to avoid a vendor lock, or because it was difficult to find third-party code and bring it in in an efficient manner. The truth is, though, Joomla has always had external dependencies. If you look in our code base today, server-side, you'll find dependencies like the less C PHP library or uh, PHP mailer. And client-side, we've always had MooTools or jQuery. Granted, these aren't high-level dependencies that make our application somewhat rigid, like if we were to use Symfony's HTTP foundation for our session, uh, session services in the CMS, but we've always had some sort of external dependency, and that's perfectly okay. The truth is I actually get the feeling that most of our user base could care less about the server-side dependencies and are more concerned with their client-side dependencies. In the same period that we've had PHP Mailer in core, how many times have you seen it suggested that we should use a different mailing service? So how does a culture and mentality shift like what I'm suggesting here impact Joomla? I personally break it down into three major categories to look at the changes that I would suggest. At the framework level, at the CMS level, and through some of the support tools that we use throughout our community. So in the framework, I think we need to look at what we actually offer in the 43 packages that compose it today. Um, I'd, I'd seriously consider whether or not that code actually still serves a need and serves it well, or if it could be considered bloat well, bloatware at this point. I'd suggest that our application and our MVC structure, which are the heart of a Joomla application, don't necessarily need major change. These concepts function well, and they enable developers to build the tools that they need. At the same time, though, I think a majority of our uh, social packages could probably, probably be deprecated. Though they had very well intentions when they were written, the fact is that the code's not very well maintained and it's very, sel very seldomly used. Since being listed in a packagist, aside from our GitHub package, each of our social API wrappers has less than 100 downloads. There are parts of our framework where I think we can improve on compatibility with uh, external services, too. Uh, one of the ways that we've taken steps forward is deprecating our logging package, which wasn't really compatible with the PSR3 interface, 
And we've refactored our code in the framework level to only support the uh, interface requirements. So this actually enables developers to inject whichever logging service that they choose to use. Uh, a more recent topic of discussion that's come up in the CMS and framework is the possibility of replacing our client detection code with a third-party solution. Again, this is a part of our API that, though it works, it's not very well maintained and not often updated. And lastly, we need to look at the f uh, features we're being, that are being offered in our framework packages and whether they actually serve a, per a effective need or whether they're missing p pieces to make them useful. And the truth is, I think there's a lot of our API that could use a little bit of help. Our database code continues to lack schema management tools. We require raw SQL dumps to do updates or installs even. Our form package has a somewhat rigid structure and it makes it really difficult to extend, especially at the framework level and trying to work with a solution that isn't based on the CMS. And truthfully, I think there's some times that our packages just have a generally disconnected feel and doesn't feel like they all flow together. Um, our issue tracker application should really highlight what we can do with Joomla, while at the same time also show that we can use services that aren't based on Joomla to, f to build our tools. But the fact is we chose Symfony's session code over our own session code because we felt it was a better API for what we needed to do. Within the CMS, long term, it requires some shifts in our mentality and the, the way that we develop our application. Framework code has been shifting towards a services-driven model, whereas the CMS continues to be based around global statics, uh, singleton objects, and things that are very generally considered bad practices in modern code. It's not necessarily an issue that we're behind the times because we do have an application that has to move a little slower because of promises that we've made to our user base. But we do need to continue to innovate and keep up as best as we can. In fact, we can start integrating services to fill some of the voids in our API, such as support for a cloud storage layer. Our own file system API lacks support for anything except local file system storage. This in itself isn't necessarily an issue, but it, but it makes it difficult for users to manage assets through a, through a cloud storage provider. So imagine, if you will, a, f a future version of the CMS, which has a services-driven API. And perhaps we use Fly System to manage our file system integrations. Out of the box, Joomla continues to ship only an adapter that supports the local file system. But with a services-driven API, developers can implement ad other adapters that support the Fly System API. And they could support uh, integrations with Amazon or Google Cloud storages. When thinking of a future version of the CMS, there are a few things I think we need to look at too. Some oddities in our structure that should be laughed at today. For example, the files that the, uh, the files that the paths on the screen all have one thing in common. They all contain a class named Content View Featured. This is actually possible because our MVC structure has a very strict class naming convention, and our extension code doesn't have auto loading support right now. Um, where am I? Another major thing we need to look at is our API structure as a whole. Our packages need to have well-defined interfaces, so we can avoid things like doing method exists checks in JDocument within our own API. In some cases, we need to actually look at the API flexibility and whether or not it might be too flexible for our own good. There are, ever, there are parts of our API that can be overloaded by developers because of some issues in our API structure. We have a lot of classes that still don't match our autoloader conventions, so a developer can inject their own custom class with before the core system actually expects to load that class. It's great that developers have a chance to customize some of this code, but I don't think it should be really that simple to completely replace a core service just because you loaded a custom class before core. That's a hole we really need to look at filling. I mentioned our support tools a little while ago too. Though these may not necessarily see a lot of change if we change our own development practices, the fact is they should continue to highlight what we can do with the Joomla code base to support our own community and keep things moving efficiently. So how do we move ourselves forward as a project toward what I hope is a shared goal of improving our own code structures and enticing new users to use our code? Structurally, I think we need to define what the next generation of our application structure looks like, both at the framework level and within the CMS itself. 
does that application structure continue to fit the legacy that we've built? Or do we need to look at something new to carry us forward for the next five to seven years? Do the APIs that we've written continue to serve their needs well, or are they, or are they missing pieces to make them useful? These are questions that we should be asking and answering as we look over our code base to figure out our issues and resolve them to create an efficient platform for the next generation. We need a plan. It's difficult to plan a vacation if you have no idea where you're going. The fact is, this same kind of concept applies to software development too. Historically, we've sucked at creating a roadmap and following it. Uh, ideas are either too ambitious, uh, they just don't make sense in our application structure, or they just never get followed through on. For years, our development strategy was essentially, if you build it, we'll take it. And though it worked for a little while, and we saw quite a few features come in, it's not a viable long-term development strategy. One of the things that we have in motion right now is establishing a modularized application framework. Since it's already in motion, let's go ahead and continue doing this. Let's enhance our API, working on the individual components of that API to build a better structure for our user base. Joomla is not the only open source project going through some of the growing pains that we'll be going through or are already going through. Drupal, for example, is addressing many of the same issues that we will be addressing or have already started looking at by com integrating Composer into their core API. Collaborating on open source isn't just about uh, the code. There's a lot of knowledge to be gained also from open source communities and our own experience using other open source platforms. And even learning why things didn't work in one project could help us better improve our own structures. So we should be willing to open the door and open discussions with developers outside our own community to gather ideas about how we can improve our own code structures and implement those ideas, learning from the successes and failures from other projects. The theme of JAB this year is golden times ahead. I think there's a lot of potential for our project, uh, and, we have a, well, and we have a bright future ahead of us if we can all get ourselves on the same page and moving forward with something. It'd be a shame if we came out of this weekend without anything productive. So why don't we start working on the next version of our application structure, defining what we want that application to look like. Or maybe we go about it a different way. Let's look at building a developer survey, figure out if our APIs are actually serving our developers' needs or if they're missing something. Maybe we figure out why developers are leaving the project, because it's just as important that we know why users stop using Joomla as much as they started using it. We need some signs of progress moving forward, and it's something that, as a project, we've been lacking. And historically, I think Jab has been the place where you can kickstart that type of stuff. Having a vision for the project's future can help bring back some of the positivity that we've been lacking over the last few months. Just working on crafting this presentation, I feel a lot better about our future because I have hope for our future. So this is my vision for Joomla's future. It's a vision I want to see become a reality. And I hope you share my optimism about this future and hope you'll work with me to make it happen. Thank you. <laughs>